Welcome back everyone, another week of Taurus Talk here at SG Taurus. I'm your host Matt LePan. This week we're going to give you a resource that a lot of you out there might not know, but it's a terrific resource for you, your company, your techs that are out in the field, really anyone in the HVAC industry. And to do that, we're going to bring in the owner of the HVAC Pro Blog. That's Chris Morin. That's HVACProblog.com. Chris, thanks for coming on the podcast today. Thanks a lot, Matt. It's great to be in. I'm really looking forward to providing uh, some support to your contractors. Hopefully, they'll find uh, these resources very valuable. Let's get to the beginnings here. First off, a lot of people people know the name. Yes. People know your credentials here if they've listened to our talk before. But how did you come to the decision to put together the HVAC Pro blog? Yeah, Matt. So actually, it's been eight or ten years now. Originally, it was XS Air. It was uh, a blog on Google's blogspot.com. It was free. And that's what I did for a few years. I actually, interesting story, back then I worked for a utility rebate company and I used to train technicians day in and day out. And I used to get a lot of questions that had nothing to do with what I was teaching, right? So they would just of course. yeah throw that, that weird one out there about that crazy job they got. And I realized I had a lot more to share than what my current role in the industry actually gave me an outlet for. So I decided to go ahead and start writing short articles in the hopes of building an audience and you know, maybe writing a book or, or providing training someday. And you know, it just started to, to really grow, particularly in the last four or five years. But I transferred all of that excess air content over to HVAC Pro Blog. Back then with excess air, it used to just be uh, heating and cooling service type blogs because that was my audience at the time. Obviously, as my role changed in the industry, I started meeting with more business owners and salespeople. So I really started to develop uh, another whole additional side of that blog where there's business related and system design content. We're down here in our Mansfield Mass branch, 600 West Street, Mansfield Mass. And you mentioned how you wanted to eventually write a book or get into training or something like that. You're providing a training class for some of our dealers here tonight. Talk to me about how you actually got to that point where the blog was to the point. And what point did you realize this, that you were ready to start doing training courses with whether it be techs or business owners or something like that? When did you realize that it was to that point and how have you successfully kind of laid that out? Yeah, great question, Matt. So, you know, the content's one thing. I can write what I think people want to read. Unfortunately, there's no voting there, right? So they either read it or they don't. So it's hard to gauge what the actual audience is sometimes and what their interests are. But what I started finding was I started getting a lot of emails and questions about system design and code enforcement in Massachusetts, particularly because that's where I live. And I realized there's a huge need out there. So it was less about what I wanted to talk about and more about what the contractors were asking for at that point. So when I started getting those questions, I realized these all fall under the the three basic system design manuals, right? So manuals J, S, and D. And that's what is starting to become enforced unilaterally across the state. So this was probably, I'd say two or three years ago when I first started developing this content. I tested it here and there. I created some e-learnings actually. And e-learning is pretty good, but I think in Massachusetts, particularly in the Northeast, people like the face-to-face uh, meeting and, and they're willing to, to pay a cost rather than, than deal with a recorded version of me. So Yeah, it's, it, you know, people say we're not friendly. We want to talk to you face-to-face. We might not say the nicest things up here <laughs> in Massachusetts, but the, definitely like the face-to-face interaction. Now you bring up system design. Why is that so important within the state of Massachusetts especially, but you know really for the whole New England area, almost everywhere is going very strict on needing to have a manual J, a manual S, or a manual D. Why is that being enforced so strictly now, and why is it so important to make sure that a dealer or contractor is out there getting those done? Yeah, it, it's, it's critical to installing the right system, the right size system, a comfortable system, and one that uses the least amount of energy, right? So that's the main thing in for the dealer. Obviously, uh, the enforcement is something that's newer. So what a lot of people don't realize, it's been in the international code for just about uh, 13 years now, since 2006. Wow. So uh, the fact that it hasn't been enforced is not the real good reason why you contractor shouldn't be doing it, right? right? So, But that is the big turnaround, right? So as soon as a building inspector asks for it, that's when people say, oh boy, I should get some training. 
I should start asking questions. I need to know how to do this in order to provide the, the best level of service to my customer. Really, the need for a load calculation has been around for decades, and that was probably the simplest piece that most people learn and know off the start, right? They probably taught that at a, at a pretty early age in the industry. The next piece after manual J, once you have that load calculation, that's kind of the roadmap, right? That's just telling you how big the system needs to be, but how big can the system can the system be, right? That, that's the key. So yes, you can oversize a unit, but it's only by a certain amount of BTUs. And also you don't want to undersize a unit very much either, right? So that's where manual S comes in for all residential application systems. So and then of course, the sizing the duct work residentially is for uh, ACA manual D. So, you know, those three manuals, they've been around for decades. They've been refined through, I guess you could call it a, a peer based process uh, throughout the country with ACCA. The fact that it's written into code and it's, it's actually a, a process developed by HVAC contractors is not a bad thing, it's a good thing. It's gonna help you set apart your company from somebody that's not doing system design and not pulling a permit. Yeah, and we've talked about manual J's and getting them done with us at SG Taurus, which folks can do uh, if you call into our inside sales team. And we have the great anecdote from Phil Valpe, who you know very well, that when Phil started in the industry, uh, a load calculation was there was a piece of paper they had with three cutouts on it, and it was a small house, a medium house, and a big house. If it fit into the box, then that's, you know, you looked underneath it, and that's the size system you went with. A yeah, little, little more advanced today. We joke about that in my class, too. Uh, we, we jokingly call that manual E for the eyeball method. So, <laughs> that's um, good. There is a few other ones out there, right? I mean, there's uh, square feet per ton, which is just as laughable. Right. right. Um, it's, it's another rule of thumb that we might have been taught by our fathers or grandfathers that uh, just because we didn't have callbacks doesn't mean it's right. You know, it's really important that they follow the right process that's been laid out for a really long time. And, you know, it does start with some simple things like um, site survey, which is what I teach in the class. Right. So all the pieces and information that you need in order to put the right info into the calculator, which would be, you know, the usual software programs that are that are authorized, right? Right Soft or Elite Software or Carmel, right? There's a bunch of them out there. Yeah, there's a lot out there now. I think the, the industry standard we pretty much can agree on is Right Soft, that what most companies are out there using at this point. Yeah, um, interesting you say that. I, I've used Right Soft for about 15 years now, and um, I still get calls like I'm their tech support, so please don't please don't call course. me for that. But <laughs> um, certainly, uh, when I ask and talk to building inspectors in Massachusetts, they actually prefer Right Soft because it's easier for them to read the reports and it has all the information they're looking for. So obviously they're not just looking for the summary page, uh, right. but that's what the equivalent is on some of these other reports from other software programs. So I could never see them you know, requiring WriteSoft only, but if you wanna make your life easy, you might wanna use the one that they want you to use. Yeah, industry standards aren't requirements, but they're standards for a reason. And so that's that's a great point. I, I don't think we would have noted that. And that's some of the great content you can get at HVACProblog.com. Chris, what's some of the other content? We covered, you know, that you do the system design classes. What's some of the other content that folks can get, though, when they go to the blog? Yeah, so the easiest way to keep in contact with me is actually subscribing to the blog, right? So typically I release a new blog or article weekly. You know, I try to provide some quote cards and uh, some other pieces on social media to drive uh, some content and, and some traffic to my site. Ideally, you know, uh, I'm not just a, a design trainer, right? So I'm gonna provide some, some commentary on, on stuff that uh, really highlights what's going on in the industry today. Uh, most recently, like as an example, the city of Brookline passed a bill prohibiting uh, new oil tanks and gas infrastructure being installed, right? So there was a big blog that just got released this morning on oil tanks in your home and when is it time to, to look at for your, uh, a different fuel source. Really, it's, it's advice for residential HVAC system design, quality installation, and diagnosis. It does cover a large range in the industry. I think the layout is, is, is appealing. It's easy to, easy to see even on, on a mobile device. I've, I've been trying. Did all that work myself, Matt. I hope you're proud. Very proud. Uh, very thanks. proud of you, Chris. <laughs> um, so, and, and also, I do put a little bit about myself in there that's uh, not HVAC related. So if you'd like to know more about me, if you go to the About page, um, there's a couple of blogs I typed up about my personal life as well, just so people understand where I'm coming from. People who have just heard you talk or seen you in some of the other stuff that you do don't get the full picture of who you are. And Chris is an awesome resource. We use him constantly 
here at SG Taurus in a wide variety of ways and a lot of his content is really engaging. It's not just something you're going to look at and snore through. You know, a lot of blogs out there just reprint something that you see in all your industry magazines. That's not what you're getting at the HVAC Pro blog. Chris puts a lot of work into researching these topics, making sure that they're thoughtfully written, and he provides good content out to you, uh, not just on the blog, but on social media as well. What What's the most challenging part of getting new and relevant content in a field that's been around forever and an old school industry that kind of resists a little bit. There are a lot of folks that resist the technology similar to what you're doing. That's very true. Uh, so I think uh, what's telling is my email subscription numbers versus who follows me on social media in the industry, <laughs> right? So uh, a lot less followers on social media in our industry these days. So you're right. I think the toughest thing is sticking to my audience and knowing my audience. So my audience is the HVAC contractor or anybody participating in the HVAC trade, right? So I'm not typing up blogs for homeowners. I'm not responding to their questions. I'm not, um, it's not for everybody, right? I've had to make tough decisions sometimes on uh, speaking engagements where it just wasn't the right audience for me, even though they would have got a lot of value out of it. It just didn't make sense for the growth of my blog. So you're right, it, there is some challenges, and that, that being one of them, the, the second one is, is honestly finding the time and being consistent. So it can be really hard and challenging. You know, Everybody knows I have a day job. Um, I do not do this during my day job. This is a, a night and weekend content development. So I'm scheduling emails on the weekends, a week or two out, right? Like most uh, marketing team members. So I'm doing all of that for myself, so it is, uh, on the smaller side because of that as far as scale goes, but I get to control all that content. Um, and to give you an idea, I've had one guest blogger in 10 years. So it was a great blog. I had to, I had to repost it, but you know, if anybody out there uh, thinks they have uh, some great idea for content, I would be more than happy to, uh, to entertain those. Help the man out. He's a busy man. We all know it. Uh, again, it's HVACProblog.com. Chris, what are some of the upcoming pieces, if you don't mind giving a small peek into the future here for folks. What are oh, some sure. of your upcoming pieces that you might have going out to folks? In the yeah, industry? that's great. So thanks, Matt. Um, so I've actually, I'm close to finishing recording the manual S uh, section for my e-learning, which I'm going to actually package together. So if you're unable to make it to an in-person class, you'll be able to take all three manuals, J, S, and D. So site survey, item manual J, equipment selection for all residential equipment, and the third piece being ACA Manual D, which is residential duct design, you'd be able to get all of that in one spot without actually leaving your couch, right? So, so um, we were talking earlier that a lot of our industry likes to be in person at the class, but if you can't make it for whatever reason, and even the younger crowd, right, it's really important to get these guys engaged and learn early to get them enrolled into an e-learning that they are able to take off hours or at night. Yeah, and if, if you're a young professional in the HVAC industry, you know, it's tough to get out to some of these classes. You're working long hours trying to get yourself established in the field. So the ability to go on to the HVAC Pro blog and essentially take learning courses without having to, you know, leave your house. You know, you can be, be at home to your family and then get this done later in the night or get done early in the morning or on your lunch. You know, any of these things, you can start to chip away at it. It's a really invaluable tool for everyone. Like we said, this is for everyone who's involved in the HVAC industry. Chris's information is great and make sure you're checking it out. Chris, how can folks stay in touch with you and how can they find you on the internet and on social media? Yeah, so I'm actually on uh, LinkedIn, Twitter, which would be at HVAC Morin and uh, Facebook. I have a uh, HVAC Pro blog page on Facebook. Um, so you can catch me on social media in those locations. I always post uh, the blog and content um, at the same time as my email subscription list. If you want to subscribe for emails that are free, you can go to uh, HVACProBlog.com and on every page there's a subscribe for free button at the top or the bottom. So that's the easiest way. Or you can email me if you need to answer uh, quickly, let's say that evening or over the weekend. Email is my first initial C, last name Morin, M-O-R-I-N, at HVACProBlog.com. It's easy to get in touch with him, and Chris is a great resource. And like I said, we use him here at SG Taurus all the time in a variety of ways. So he's helping out our guys. Our guys are looking to help you out. So if you want to get directly in touch with him, check it out there. 
And make sure to go to the website, make sure to check out the content, subscribe to everything. It's hvcproblog.com. Want to thank Chris for coming on. Want to thank you all out there for tuning in. Make sure to subscribe to the podcast. Apple Podcasts, Google Play, Spotify, anywhere you can find a podcast, you can find us. Search Taurus Talk. You can also find us on social media. Search SG Taurus to find our pages or use the hashtag Taurus Talk to talk directly to us. And as always, you can catch all of our podcasts on our website, sgtaurus.com backslash podcasts. I want to thank you again for tuning in. We'll see you next week on Taurus Talk.